friends and family, welcome to another video of Let's Be Creative with the Luther Burbank Center for the Arts. My name is Jose Soto and I'm the music specialist of the center. We're going to start taking some, producing some videos for you to take, learn how to play the violin. But before we do the classes, before we do, go ahead and do those videos, I want to talk to you a little bit about the violin. The violin is a European instrument. We we had it for many many years, and it's it's used by orchestras, it's used by mariachis, it's used by a lot of different styles of music. The violin I'm using this is my personal violin, and this is one of my favorites from all times. It's been about ten years since I got this violin, and I don't think I will change it. Even if I were to get a better violin than this one. I will want to keep this one. It is super, very, very special. So basically, when there are stores that that focus on selling uh, violins, they buy and sell violins because it's a really, really good business. Violins sell for a lot of money. You can go on Amazon and buy a violin for eighty dollars, and or you could buy a five million dollar violin. Even if you had the money, that would be really difficult to obtain one of those. Uh, basically, the most famous musicians have those or they're just part of a museum. Uh, there's a brand called Antonio Stradivarius. That's one of the most well-known brands. And those violins go for four to five million, each of those violins. This violin was created in Venice in the year of 1752, which is about 206, 268 years or something like that. We don't know who built, we don't know the name of the luthier who created this violin, but we know it came from Venice and we know the year. Um, it's been, it's a really, really well taken care violin. It has two cracks. You can hardly see them here, but they, they have been fixed. And basically that does not affect the sound of the violin at all. One of the reasons I love this violin is because I, since the, that, since the day I play it at the store, I just got in love. As soon as I put it on my shoulder, it was already very, it was very comfortable. And that's a big part. If the violin that you use, the instrument you use, has to be really comfortable when you grab it. This is, this violin, uh, it's in the thousands, you know, it's it's not a cheap violin. It's not the most expensive violin, but I, I just love the sound. The way I would buy a violin when I was younger, I would care about the price a lot. Every time I went to the store, I would ask, could you tell me the, the price of that violin? Could you pray, tell me the price of that violin? And I basically stopped doing that and I, one day I say, could I just play a few violins? Don't talk to me about the price and I'm gonna choose one. And that's basically what I do now. I go to the store, I try a lot of violins and at the end I ask for the price because a lot of people tend to go for the price instead of the sound. You know, they say, oh, this violin is more expensive so it sounds better. I don't think it's that way. It has to connect with you. It has to it has to resonate with you. Of course, if you compare a violin with you know a, a eighty dollar violin with a thousand dollar violin, there's gonna have to be some some difference there. But even then, you might like the other one way better. I know my students they don't use the most expensive instruments, but I love playing with their instruments. If we make sure we got them really high quality instruments. And even though we're on a budget, those instruments are really, really special. They have a beautiful sound. The new violins are becoming better and better. Uh, even though those violins uh, are coming better and better nowadays, the older a violin is and the history it has, that's also part of the price. You know, a lot of people invest on instruments just because they have a lot of history and because it's like having gold. They could go anytime and they could sell it and people will pay a lot of money for, for this instrument. But that's about 
buying a violin and about the price. Let me talk to you about the way they build a violin. Basically, it's made out of pieces. This is one piece of wood, the neck with the with the back box right here. This it's another piece of these are another little pieces of wood. The top, the top is this, and this is the back of the violin. That's another piece of wood. So the, it's made out of pieces and then they put them together. We have the top, the back, here the size, and we have the fingerboard, which is a, it's made out of ebony. It's like a more a hotter uh, wood. It's not even wood, it, it's more like a bone wood. I, I guess if it was wood, we will, it will be really easy to crack knowing how many times we put our fingers on the violin. Then we have the bottom here, which is holding all the tension between the pegs and, and the tailpiece. This is called the tailpiece, where basically it's where we connect the string with the peg. Each string gets one peg and we use a bridge which is the bridge is a, it's made out of wood and it basically looks entire it looks like a bridge and that raises the strength a little more and so that's what prevents the strings from touching the fingerboard and each string has a name this one it's e then we have a d and g the way we tune the violin is by moving the pegs here and then we have these little devices which are called fine tuners so we can make really small changes on the intonation of our strings so we can make it higher we can make it lower there this is called chin rest basically when we put our our violin on our shoulder this helps it's some kind of support for us to rest uh, our chin with our part of our cheek when they first built the violin they didn't have a chin rest i don't think today you will see a lot of violins without the chin rest basically almost every single violin use it these are called egg holes and basically that's where the sound comes out of the violin a lot of the the luthiers make the f holes a little bit different you know that's like their signature that's a way of saying oh this is my way of doing a different violin most of the measurements have to stay the same for for violins you don't you won't see like really big violins or very short violins they come on sizes we have a one fourth then a half three quarters and a full size which is a four four this is a full size violin. And basically if you are talking on a full size, you can get them a little bit smaller or a tiny bit bigger, but no, not very much. So something that not a, not a lot of people know, it's about the sound pose. And the sound pose is a little piece of wood that goes inside the violin and it's sitting uh, right behind the bridge. And that what that does is connecting the bottom part of the violin with the top. So the sound is moving from the, from the bottom to the top. And, and without that sound post, the violin doesn't sound the same. People pay up to $100, $200 to move the sound post. And people go very far to different places looking for people who move the, the sound post. It's like the special touch of the violin. And they can basically make it that if they move it, these two strings will sound more, or the top strings, if you want them to sound more, there's a way they can adjust that. The best way to do it is where a violin sounds all equal. Different people like different sounds. So just know that that's one of the most important parts of the violin. It's inside the violin, it's a tiny bit, but that's the heart, that's the brain. Without th that little piece of wood, the violin doesn't sound the same. Basically, that's about it, about the, about the violin. Uh, just know that I, I always recommend my kids to take care of their violins 
and they have to pretend that these are babies. These are newborns. They're very fragile and you don't want to drop them. You don't want to leave them where it's too hot. You don't want to leave them where it's too cold because these instruments are literally like humans. They breathe and if you put them in a hot place, the intonation will change. If you put them in a cold place, the intonation will change. Uh, they can totally damage. I used to play a lot of gigs outside and one of my violins basically one day explode. It broke from here and it was because it was too hot and all that tension that creates, this is wood. And remember, these are pieces of wood that at some point they were and put together. So you have to take care of, of the violin. You have to take care of the violin. Remember, this is my little brother, my little sister. I'm taking care of them. I hope you had fun with the violin. We will start our classes very soon. I just want you to know that the violin, the violin has a special, you know, history, just like any other instrument. This is one of my favorites. I hope you enjoy knowing a few things about the violin. Thank you.